There's a difference between personal preference and just straight up being a douchebag. Like for me, I don't date white women. That's my personal preference. There's nothing wrong with them. I'm not gonna generalize them. It's just me. I'm gonna give you an example as to why. I'm dating you. I go to your family house for Thanksgiving. I'm not gonna feel comfortable because my black ass might be the only, the only one there. You feel what I'm saying? I might be the only melanated person there. I'm not gonna feel comfortable. That's just me. Now, I'm not saying your family is racist. I'm not saying your family might lynch me in the backyard. It, it's nothing like that. It's just me. My personal preference is I'd rather deal with a black woman who will understand what it's like for me and my black ass and the fear that I have when I walk outside on these streets. A white lady or a white woman might sympathize with it, but she wouldn't understand it. I say all that to say this. Fresh and Fit came out and one of their podcasts and they try to explain the, the the comments that they made about not being night riders and not, you know, uh dabbling in the brown and the Laquisha and they try to explain that as personal preference. While that may be so, what people have a problem with is the name calling. You know who else had nicknames for black people and their skin color? You know what I'm saying? Like Ergenders and and Jiggaboos sand niggers and shit like that. You feel me? Like, I'm just saying, bro. Like, when you doing stuff like that, you gotta, you gotta relax. Now, I'm not gonna get emotional about the comments. I will say that it did strike a nerve because my aunts, my cousins, my grandmother, dark skin. I might be a little caramel, but a lot of the women in my family are dark skin. You know, I went to school with a lot of dark skin females who are gorgeous but at the time in school people try to make them feel ugly and that's something we got to stop doing man i said something in the video along the lines of the information that they give some of it is very good information but you know i don't feel as though it's coming from a a good place like what i realized though because i watched one of the i actually sat there and watched one of their podcasts all the way through it's like at the beginning, they start off so well. You feel what I'm saying? But as time keep on going, they kind of expose themselves for who they truly are. And it's kind of like when you talk to somebody and like you keep talking to them, they talk for too long or they talk too much, you start seeing exactly who they are. And that's what that's what I get from them, bro. You feel me? Like they, they expose themselves the longer they stay on air. Perfect example. That same podcast where they was trying to explain that situation as being personal preference. And of course, they had the, the chosen few um, panel of light-skinned females agreeing with them because, you know, it wasn't about them. You know, it, the name calling wasn't about them. Of course, you're going to agree. The, one of the girls that was there with Asian Doll, she came back. Darkest one in the room, besides Fresh, of course. And... It just seems as though they was ganging up on her. Like, she wasn't fully equipped <laughs> mentally to defend herself. I'm going to say that right now. She wasn't fully equipped mentally to defend herself. And she stood no chance against the Chosen Ones, led by Fit, uh, Myron, and, of course, you know, Fresh got to chime in. Like, their whole situation just seemed like Pinky in the brain to me. You know what I'm saying? We already know who the brains is, and we already know who Pinky is. Now, I don't want them folks to be canceled. I just feel as though if you're going to be a fan of them, you need to pick and choose what you're going to listen to. Pick and choose. If they came out and said, yo, you know, the reason we invite these Instagram girls on here is because we're showing you what girls not to take serious, I'm 100% on board. From what I'm getting and digesting from looking at these videos, I feel as though these two dudes weren't really popular in school, and now they get a chance to, you know, smash the girls and be around the girls that they always wanted, and they're taking full advantage of that. Full advantage of that, man. I just find it hard to take advice from 30-some-year-olds who aren't really trying to get married. You feel me? Like, my whole thing is family now i'm not gonna sit here and, and say that if my wife do some disrespectful stuff i'm not gonna leave of course i'm gonna leave you disrespect me as a man there's no need for me to be here with you but at the same time my goal is to make sure that my son and if we have any other kids to make sure they're straight for the future i want to make sure that my son grow up to be a man you feel me not a man with boyish mentality but a man you feel me like i want him to 
be more mature sooner than I was able to be mature. It took me a while to be mature. It took me a while. It's it's a lot of things that me and my wife went through, bro, that, you know, if I look back on it now, I'm like, nigga, you, you kind of simped out in that situation. You you did some real simp shit. But at the same time, you know, we here right now, so... You know what I mean? You learn from your mistakes. You learn from your mistakes. 